Lucy Fink and this week is five days in a new city. Hello out there. If you're new to Refinery29's YouTube channel, click on the little subscribe button in the corner to join the family and give this video a thumbs up if you're excited to come on this week's travel journey. All right, I am so grateful and so excited to share with you all that Venmo partnered up with me to send me on a week-long trip to Denver, Colorado. They have a new Venmo card that links up to your Venmo account and it lets you use your Venmo balance pretty much anywhere. With the card, you can track, share, and split purchases all within the app. So it's super easy to use and it's perfect for traveling. So I took mine with me to Denver and I enjoyed five days of living life in a new and beautiful city. I had such a special time and each and every day of the week was spent doing something that was truly authentic and enjoyable for me. Personally, I wasn't looking for a super touristy experience, so this video isn't gonna be five cool things to do in Denver. I just wanted to show you all what I would actually do if I had the chance to visit a new city for five days. So let me rewind to last week and show you what I did. My flight landed on Sunday night, so when I woke up on Monday morning, it was pretty much like waking up in New York on Monday morning, except looking out the window, I didn't see buildings. Instead, I saw mountains and a lot of open space. The first thing I chose to do was ground myself in this new environment and just get outside. Everyone always says when you go out west, you have to go hiking and breathe in the fresh mountain air. So that's exactly how I started my week. I took a drive out of the city and went to Lookout Mountain. The scenery was very different from what a typical walk through New York City looks like. It was crisp, it was quiet, and I was fully immersed in nature. After hiking around a bit, I pulled off into a lookout spot and I just sat down with my bullet journal and started doing some serious reflecting. I expressed my gratitude for the ability to be in this beautiful setting for a business trip and also for the fact that my business involves making these videos in the first place. When I first arrived, it was 70 degrees Fahrenheit in downtown Denver, but there was snow up on the mountaintops. There was wildlife up there, the air was so refreshing, and it was the perfect way to unwind and get settled after the flight in. I didn't have any plans for the rest of the day, so I just sort of sat on the mountain and thought about what I wanted to do with my time. I realized that my friend Diana was visiting Colorado for work at the same time. So the two of us met up at a local yoga studio called Kindness Yoga in Golden, Colorado. We took a private yoga class together in this beautiful mirrored room Room that was just swimming with natural light. Pressing down through your sitting bones, grow tall through your crown. From the moment I walked into the studio, I felt at home. <laughs> Sway hip side to side, shake your head out yes and no. And as you continue to breathe, absorbing the spirit of the mountains, how you connect with the landscape, noticing the details, the snow, the jagged edges. Together we bow forward, honoring each other, and together we say, Namaste. Tuesday in Denver was food day. Every day was food day, but Tuesday was my food tour day. Most people do a ton of online research before visiting a new city so that they can know the best places to eat at. I decided to gather intel straight from the source, local people from Denver and those that had been there before. I made an Instagram stories post asking for Denver food recommendations, and within hours I had hundreds of replies for places to eat breakfast, lunch, brunch, dinner, and dessert. I didn't know it before Tuesday, but Denver has a major food scene. After getting all of those recommendations, I was having a little bit of trouble deciding where to go first. So I settled on the Denver Milk Market since it's essentially a giant food hall with multiple restaurants in one place. I had the world's sweetest breakfast at Morning Jones. What to eat first? <laughs> a giant cinnamon bun that was about the size of my face. Wow. A homemade berry Pop-Tart, which was ridiculously good, and a seasonal hot drink topped with whipped cream and caramel. One of my favorite things about traveling alone is that you don't have to worry about talking to someone else while you eat. So you can really just focus on stuffing your face. After breakfast, I took a walk through the rest of the milk market and was just amazed by all that was going on around me. I saw some fresh made pasta being cut. Slice, slice, slice. Whoa. And then I got myself a delicious banana and Nutella crepe to take for the road. And when I checked my phone again, I realized that I had so many recommendations for another marketplace, the Denver Central Market. After all of the sugar and the sweetness at the milk market, I decided to start my time off at the Denver Central Market with my favorite savory food. You know what it is. 
pizza. I've made a number of pizzas before at local New York spots, so it was really awesome to meet up with an Italian who lived in Denver and to get behind the counter of his restaurant. Buongiorno. Andrea walked me through the process of making a couple of his signature pizzas. Whoa. Good job. Thank you, I've done this before. One was an acorn squash pizza, and another was a classic spicy pie with soppressata. Don't be shy, oregano is delicious. He let me use the traditional wood-fired oven where I pop the pizzas in. Here we go. Wow. Ha ha ha. And then learned how to pull them out, swinging hot. Take it and you say, swinging hot. Swinging hot. Beautiful. Whoa. At all these food vendors today, I paid with my Venmo card. Thank you so much. Wow. And I even had the pleasure of meeting up with my friend Diana one last time, and she shared these pizzas with me. We were able to split the cost nice and easily on the Venmo app, and then we sat, enjoyed, laughed, and just caught up with one another. I do love being by myself and exploring a new place on my own, but it's also nice to have a friend nearby that you can share the experience with. After the pizza stop, we rounded out the day with some local ice cream from High Point Creamery. Not only do I love ice cream, but I also love local female-owned businesses. And Erica was a total badass. She's a car dealer turned ice cream shop owner, and she let me taste tons of her amazing flavors. It's one of our seasonal flavors, and we make a hammy beet jam and a creme fraiche ice cream with a brittle. That's delicious. I ultimately settled on a flight of five flavors with chocolate sauce on the side. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Wednesday was probably the most exciting day for me in Denver because I had the chance to host my first ever meet and greet. A few weeks before going to Colorado, I posted an Instagram story where I asked my Denver followers to swipe up if they wanted to join my meet and greet when I was in town. I had a bunch of signups, which to be completely honest, just blew my mind because not only was it on a Wednesday right in the middle of the week, but it was right in the middle of the day too. I planned this event at Hotel Teatro, an adorable boutique style hotel that has a very cozy lobby filled with books couches and a fireplace and I had the chance to welcome everyone into this space I'm just blown away that this crowd is here and that Try Living with Lucy has gotten to this place let's mingle and eat cheese to share a little bit about Try Living with Lucy when I started this series in 2015 it was truly born out of my personal desire to want to try new things I talked about the making of the series the evolution of the show from 2015 to now and then I got to meet one-on-one -on -one with each fan that came you look so cute we're in the same sorority I'm getting like wacky now I'm just like, like yes. people showed up from all different age brackets so so there were girls as young as 13 there who skipped school to meet me. Do you skip school today? <laughs> <laughs> so you skip school too? Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. And then there were tons of women closer to my age and older. And it wasn't only women. Yay, I'm so excited. <laughs> the energy in the room was amazing. And one thing that I loved that I hadn't anticipated before was that this meet and greet was bringing locals together. So people were now making friends in their own city. The best part of the day was definitely hearing from different people about how my episodes and my career path in general have influenced them. When I think of Lucy, I just think bright and happy. She always has a great attitude. She inspires me to do things that I would normally be uncomfortable with. As a young person, it's really cool to see somebody that lives their life so fun. Somebody told me that because of me, she switched her major from neuroscience to creative writing, which is her real passion. And that switch from neuro to writing was my exact switch too. So. Another <laughs> media powerhouse. A bunch of girls brought bullet journals with them to show me how mine had inspired them. She drew all of the Ayurvedic doshas. And that is for you. This is for me? I gave each person that came a gift bag that had some awesome goodies in it. <laughs> a copy of R29's Money Diaries book. A really cute Refinery29 t-shirt. Some of my favorite skincare products from Crude. And Try Living With Lucy stickers. I think my favorite part about this day was being able to put some actual faces to the audience that I'm constantly connecting with online. She lives on a farm. I have 400 chickens, 30 ducks. Three goats, three dogs, and a horse. See you yes. for five days on a farm. Yes. Wednesday was such a special day for me. It's one that I will never forget in my entire life. So if you are one of my Colorado fans out there who came, thank you so much for joining me. And for the rest of you, if you want to see me do meet and greets in your city, then comment below and tell me where I should go. I tried living with Lucy. Woo! After 
rejuvenating, sightseeing, eating, and making tons of friends, I wanted Thursday to be all about doing something active. I love visiting new cities and finding something to do that's maybe not quintessentially touristy, but is rather just something that I really want to try. I found a place called iFly Denver, an indoor skydiving facility where you essentially have a simulated skydiving experience inside of a giant glass tube. It's this giant glass casing with air and wind circulation that can be altered based on your weight and skill level. And the wind is actually being pushed down from the top along the sides of the chamber, and then because of the pressure, it's pushed back up the middle, creating this continuous cycle of air for the flyers. When we first got there, there were some professionals that were practicing inside of the chamber, and it was absolutely ridiculous. They were flipping upside down, spinning, floating to the top and bottom faster than looked safe. At times, there were four of them at once in there doing almost like a choreographed dance together. I met up with Claire, a coach at iFly, who walked me through some of the basics. Like, it looks easy watching it, but you'll be surprised when you get in there how technical I'm it is. Sure. We went into almost a classroom type setting where I first watched an instructional video, and I was pretty amazed by what I was seeing. She taught me the basics of what was about to happen. The main thing that's gonna help you out in there is just relax, hold still, try and move nice and slow and smooth. If you're wiggling around all over the place, it's gonna be really tricky to get balanced. And then she went over some hand signals. Use these hand signals just to kind of adjust your body, get you nice and balanced. So if I go like this, what does that mean? Chin up. Straight legs. Awesome, this one. Bend legs. Chill. What those professionals were doing inside of the chamber looked like so much fun, and I have to admit, when I first saw it, I thought that was what I was gonna be doing. But I quickly learned that it takes years to get to that level, and that all I was gonna be doing today on my first time was classic belly down simulated skydiving. Getting nervous yet? A little. A little. <laughs> Don't panic, you got it. I started out by just gently leaning into the air chamber and having Claire hold on to me. I was stomach down the whole time in the generic position of a skydiver, and we just practiced this for a little while. She gave me some hand symbols to remind me to keep my chin up and to straighten or bend my legs, which helps you move in different directions. And you really need to relax in there and just let the wind blow you up. It is such a crazy sensation, I honestly couldn't stop smiling the entire time. After I tried it a couple of times, it was time for my high fly. They cranked the airspeed up a bit. She held on to me and then the two of us just shut up into the chamber. Such a cool experience. I would highly recommend it. Maybe indoor skydiving isn't for you and that's totally okay, but it's always great to find things that fit your unique interests when you travel. There's all sorts of different activities that you can stumble on through a simple internet search and those random ideas of yours might just become some of your all-time favorite memories. On my last day of the trip, I headed out for some shopping, and I really wanted this day to be all about finding shops and boutiques that were owned by Denver locals. I first visited Haley Grace Boutique, a boutique clothing store owned by two young women in Denver who met in college and then decided to start a business together. I walked through the store and grabbed so many items because I just couldn't resist, and I wound up doing a fashion show by myself in the store. I left with a cute floral jumpsuit, which is actually the one I'm wearing right now. Afterwards, I was searching online and I came across this perfect female-owned plant shop and I knew I had to go. Plant paradise. So now that I'm kind of a plant pro, whenever I come across a plant shop, I just can't stop myself. Jessica, the owner of Green Lady Gardens, has had a dream of owning a shop like this for years. And she finally turned that dream into a reality just a few months ago. So the shop is still relatively new and it was beyond colorful and a total plant lover's paradise. Succulents and air plants, cacti and hanging plants, everything you can think of, plus an assortment of crafts from local artists, and an entire section of notebooks which I can never ever resist. I found a giant air plant. I had never seen one that big before, and I loved it so much that I brought it back home for my sister. Then I found a teeny little succulent that was just calling my name. He was the perfect size to fit inside of my boot in my suitcase for the flight home, and now he's chilling on my windowsill, looking good. This week-long trip to Denver was everything I could have hoped for and more. My week was the perfect mix of relaxation and revitalization with activity and adventure. I was able to spend some really valuable time by myself, some amazing one-on-one time with a close friend and even met a whole new group of friends along the way. I hope you enjoyed watching what five days in a new city looks like for me. I'd love to know what you do when you travel somewhere so any must do's or travel tips are always welcome and also comment below to let me know what city you think I should visit next. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time on Try Living with Lucy. Bye! 
Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Click here to watch another five day challenge. Here to subscribe to R29 on YouTube and right here for my personal YouTube channel. Bye.